Algeria is under development stems from entrenched impunity, fueling corruption, election rigging, and accountability gaps. Now, impunity hinders economic growth, social justice, and institutional strength. Now, in Jide Ojo's piece, uh, he wrote that to combat impunity, Nigeria needs institutional reform, citizen engagement, anti-corruption education, and leadership accountability. But will Nigeria's next generation of leaders prioritize accountability, tackling impunity's grip to unlock prosperity and growth? That is one of the big questions. Now joining us on the show today, we have Jide Ojo. He is a public affairs analyst. Uh, thank you so much, Jide, for joining us on the show. It's my pleasure, Gashen. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so uh, Mr. Ojo, your article highlights impunity as Nigeria's primary challenge. And you also said, you know, it trumps other factors like lack of rule of law, tribalism, incompetence, self-aggrandizement, religious bigotry, and the rest. Now, can you elaborate on this assertion? Okay, so um, I was just reflecting uh, over Nigeria's uh, development challenge over the decades. We just celebrated for the 64th uh, independence anniversary a couple of weeks back, uh, early this month on the 1st of October. And Everybody has characterized Nigeria as a crippled giant, as uh, underdeveloped, as uh, you know, uh, a country where anything goes. And I just, in, in my reflection, I said, look, um, why many people say, oh, corruption is our number one problem, leadership is our number one problem, followership is the bait. I, 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 I beg to disagree with every one of them. I believe that. Why those may be symptoms of our national malaise, the actual problem lies with impunity. In this country, we reward bad behavior. Uh, people get away with new murder. People do and undo. Here's a country where you see somebody, you know, openly boasting that they will kill another person and nothing will happen. And they meant it. And there have been people who committed murder who went scoffy uh, and, and all manner of social malaise. Look at corruption. Um, people still in billions. Mm. But what do they get in return? Slap on the wrist. You go for plea bargain. And then you return. If you stole maybe 50 billion, you just return like 2 billion, pocketed the 48 billion, and then you go for six months imprisonment. Uh, I remember a bank chief executive who collapsed a bank, uh, and uh, even after the plea bargain, she only spent six months, and the six months was spent in the hospital under the guise that she's not feeling well. And that, and how, how can a country develop when you have this kind of impunity? We have people who rig election, openly admitted that they rig election, and they still are never arrested. Questioned, imprisoned. Well, I mean, I, I, I just well, can't. Well, I just can't wrap my head around did, the did, kind did, of culture of impunity we have in this country. Well, well, today we hope you don't mind. We're going to be focusing on your piece today. Uh, now, you also referenced George Orwell's Animal Farm, you know, to illustrate on equal accountability. And you said, you know, crimes and criminality are global phenomenon. You know, uh, that the chances of criminals getting away with their crimes are slim in, ma in many other countries, you know, but in Nigeria, it is very, very high. Now, how pervasive is this mindset in Nigeria? How bad is it? You can bear me witness that it's very, very bad. It's not sitting. It's, it's mind-boggling. It's heart-rending. I, I bleed. I bleed in my heart are the way people commit crime and get away with this in this country. I was earlier alluding to election rigging. Mm. Um, at least, I do know of a former governor, a former chief, chief of staff to a governor, and a former deputy president of the Senate of Nigeria, who have at different times admitted that they have to rig elections. And it's, it's a crime in our statute books to rig election. One of them is dead now. Two others are alive. 
It is in this country you have a, a former senator whose wife was president of court of appeal saying in front of camera, and you can fact check me on this, the footage is there on YouTube, saying I, I infringe on my wife's freedom and independence to get her to help my colleagues in the Senate. That is an open confession. Nobody ever invited him for questioning. And is that not impugning on the integrity of the judiciary? If your wife is the President Court of Appeal and you could get her to give soft landing or to pervert justice in favor of some of your colleagues because she's the one that will put up the election pension tribunals. That is how deep it is. It's, it permits all the three arms of government. I, 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 examples are banned of even governors who, who, who stole, who were convicted, and who fed former President Buhari granted state pardon. Two of them, two of them. One of them was a former governor who EFCC spent huge sums of money to investigate. And at the end of the day, because he wanted to contest for the president of the Senate, and they didn't want him to rock the boat the way it happened in 2015, in 2019, they have to appeal to him to drop his ambition. And what happens weeks after? The corruption allegations against him were withdrawn by the former Attorney General Minister of Justice. He didn't even allow the court to do substantial justice and just give a flimsy excuse why he has to file nolly prosecute. So the rest of the world well, is well, looking well, at well, us. Well, what does this How reveal we... about our justice system? Of course, it, it, that's why I said our problem is not even any of the other stuff that we thought is our problem. Impunity is our problem. The fact that somebody will commit a crime and believe in his mind, and it will happen true to, true to his assertion, that he will never go to jail. He will never, he will never be prosecuted. I, 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 is that not to tell you how bad things have become in this country? Where people, I mean, look at look at even the recent case, the Brewer, it was uh, some people buying their prison times. Somebody will get convicted. Somebody else will go to prison on behalf of that person after being paid. This was not my word. It was the words of Lanesik, Sikh, Femi Falano, in 2022, who gave a graphical illustration of how all of this is happening. And you could recall that very recently, the controversial tape of uh, the controversial voice note of uh, the cross-dresser, Bob Brisky, uh, versus VDA. Uh, they have witnessed about the, when that, 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 um, that thing was leaked on the, on the internet. And, and in, a, in, in his confessional statement that, you know, he didn't go to jail uh, because his godfather stepped in. And of course, the federal government panel said, oh, there is no evidence to support that, but he was only giving, you know, uh, special treatment. Even that special treatment, was he supposed to get it? Does he merit being, get, get, being given special treatment? That's why I said impunity is the number one problem we have in this country. The moment you start to discipline people, the moment people commit a crime and they get severely punished for it, you will see law and order prevail. You will see rule of law in place. You will see that everybody will sit tight. The issue of vote buying in election, is it today that we have been talking about vote buying in our electoral process? How many of the people who have engaged in electoral practices since 1999, 25 years ago, do the tabulation of how many arrests have been made by the police and how many successful prosecutions have happened. All of it, it, we have had seven, uh, seven general elections and several obstacle by elections, yet you hear that social number were arrested for vote buying or for electoral violence or this and that. But after three, six months, Nobody gets to hear of anything. Those 1,000 plus people that were arrested in 2023 for electoral malpractices, we learned early this year that about 60, 36 or thereabout case wise 
were sent by police to INEC for prosecution. As I speak with you, nobody knows the status of those prosecutions. And that has been the impunity over the decades, 25 years down the line. We do not have sizable number of those who committed uh, electoral malpractices that have been punished for those malpractices. We have seen so many people who commit crime and yet they walk the street free. And, 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 and how, how then do you want to instill discipline in ordinary citizens? It's not as if it's only in Nigeria that you have crimes. Crimes happen, criminality happen all over the world. But at least you know that you will be severely punished. In America, they will say, if you, if you do the crime, you must be ready to do the time. What does that mean? You must be ready to go to jail. Irrespective of, look at how many celebrities have been sent to jail in the U.S. Look at how many celebrities, even former prime ministers that have been sent to jail for, 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 for offenses that were committed while they were holding lower office. Look at what happens to Jacob Zuma in South Africa mm. when, as a former president, he was sent to jail. Can it happen in Nigeria? In, in, in Israel, a former prime minister of Israel has been sent to jail for, okay. for breaching campaign finance regulation. In France, a former, a former president of France has been sent to jail for, for breaching campaign finance regulation. So if, why, why is it that when it happens in Nigeria, eh, people just keep mouth, everything is all short, and then you get away, and then you now be surprised that such crime and criminality is festering. How will it not fester when the incentive is there that if they commit this crime, they can get away with uh, it? All right, today now let's, uh, you know, uh, link it to, you know, underdevelopment that you talked about. Uh, how significantly does, you know, bad behavior or impunity hinder economic growth and development? There's a nexus, Dashen, there's a nexus. If, let's take it from the angle of corruption. Somebody, at, take a look at what happened with the former accountant general of the Federation. Uh, I don't want to mention him, but you know him. Yeah. Under Buhari, the former accountant general was apprehended for committing, uh, you know, fraud in the tune of over 100 a billion, I think it's about 109 billion. What has happened to that, that man? That money that he embezzled, Azumi, he didn't embezzle it. Look at the number of infrastructural developments that could be done with that kind of resources. Look at Emefele. Emefele is going through his own trial now. And people have said nothing will happen. Emefele will be let off the hook because he is. It's just a poster board. It's just a, like a scapegoat because he couldn't have committed all the crimes that he was alleged to have committed, uh, uh, you know, when he was CBN governor all by himself. And that, that may well be the truth. Uh, 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 nobody knows where the case of Emifele is uh, as of now. And look at the amount of money that he was alleged to have embezzled, the misappropriation in terms of the contract over the Naira redesign project, how he circumvented the, the law to, to commit all manner of malfeasance and all of that. So when you look at corruption, what has been the contribution of corruption to the underdevelopment of this country? You will understand the nexus between impunity and, 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 uh, and underdevelopment. underdevelopment. Because when you commit this crime, the assumption is that anybody that steals public funds will not get to spend it. In China, if you are caught for corruption, it's not like there is no corruption in, in China. But you know that if you are caught, the rest are sure that you, you will die. I mean, they don't, they don't think about it twice, whether you are a former president, a former minister, you get to die. So if people abuse their offices, to rig elections, to steal public funds, to commit all manner of uh, uh, indiscretions and misbehavior, and they get away with it. How can how then can the country develop? How can it develop when you when you abuse your office with impunity? You get away with it from the set of 
governors in 1999 to 2023? How many that have been arranged in court for committing, uh, you know, uh, act of embezzlement? Have, 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 how many of them are serving jail terms? Right now, there is an attempt by governors who, uh, starting with the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, um, Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Kogi State, they have filed an, a, a brief in the Supreme Court saying that EFCC should not have jurisdiction over affairs of the state. Mm. And about 16 other governors have joined that suit, trying to make sure that EFCC does not have uh, you know, uh, jurisdiction themselves. over whatever happens within mm. their state. That means they can still with impunity. That means whatever abuse of office they commit, they can get away with it. And when you now look at what this, what the, the opportunity cost mm. of this abuse, of this corruption, of this misbehavior, it is what is robbing us of that development. Whether you talk of infrastructural development, whether you talk about human capital development, is it not when you have good schools that you can train uh, pupils and students uh, to be very uh, good ambassadors of their, of, of, yeah. of their country? Yeah, but, but still, still talking about uh, the corruption within the EFTC, uh, what structural reforms would, do you think would strengthen the EFCC's prosecution effectiveness? And, you know, just generally, uh, and briefly help us assess uh, Nigeria's anti-corruption agency's effectiveness as well. You know, in the piece under, under review, I also singled out EFCC. Part of the challenge of EFCC is that the, the chairman of EFCC does not have security of tenor. From Nu Ribadu through to Ibrahim Lamode to Ibrahim uh, Magu to uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa to the current one, uh, Olukoyede. All of them can be summarily removed from office, even for stepping on toes. And that is the impunity we are talking about. Mm. When you will not allow people to walk, rather you breathe down their neck, you threaten them. A former governor was alleged to have told New Ribadu way back then that I will make sure that you are demoted from the Nigeria police and you are sacked as EFCC chairman. And it came to pass. This, these are things in public domain. So how can you, as EFCC chairman, how can you, in good conscience, fight corruption when you know that your appointing authority cannot protect you when the corruption is fighting back? Why is it that none of the former chairmen of EFCC had ever successfully completed their tenure? They are always alleged to have abused their office, to have corruptly enriched themselves, but none of them have been prosecuted. Is that not impunity? If you allege that somebody abused this office, should you just say, okay, we, we sack you, or that you are retrenched or you are suspended, and from there you just appoint somebody else and the person can go and spend his loot, that's assuming without considering that the person actually abused his office. And that has been the series of allegations from, from Nuri Badu to, to Farida Waziri, to Ibrahim Lamode, to uh, Ibrahim Magu, down to Abdul Rashid Bawa, the youngest of them all, who happens to even be from the EFCC Academy. He was the only one that didn't come from the Nigerian police and all of them have been removed in controversial circumstances. So the question you ask yourself, Danshe, is that are they all bad? Did they all commit those crimes or they were framed? Was it a frame up to ensure that they do not touch some people? So when situations where you have sacred cows and scapegoats, situations of animal farm where, where you know, uh, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than the other. How can that guarantee efficiency and effectiveness within the Nigerian uh, anti-corruption agencies? And let me also shock you. The case, uh, there is a case under investigation. Uh, Bobriski, that's uh, uh, Okune, uh, Bobriski versus BDA. You know part of the revelation mm. from the voice note 
was that the EFCC officials collected 15 million naira bribe yeah. to drop money laundering charges against Okune, that's Bobriski. Mm -hmm. That in itself is under investigation. And so many Yahoo boys who have been previously arrested by the, by the EFCC have come forward to say that some of the properties and money seized from them were never documented in the office. That these people just seized it and confiscated it and started using those properties. So this is part of the challenge. How do you weed out the bad acts within that anti-corruption agencies? Why is there no guarantee of tenure for the chairpersons of EFCC? In, in, in the case of, in the case of uh, judges, you cannot summarily sack the judge without first going through the National Judicial Council. But in the case of EFCC, it just take a, 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 a statement by the presidency to say you have been removed. Look at the case of Bawa. Bawa was removed or suspended yeah. and was alleged to have been under uh, DSS, uh, DSS detention for like three, four months. And then the next thing, he was quietly removed and uh, somebody was named in his replacement. But you allege that this guy committed a crime. If truly he committed a crime, why was he not charged to court? Why was he not prosecuted? Why was that the, 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 the trajectory from the beginning to the last occupier of that office? So we need to strengthen the agencies that are fighting corruption in this country. One, we need to ensure that they are well resourced uh -oh. We need to ensure that we, we, we also guarantee the tenure of office. We need to also pro, uh, ensure that they are, they are properly oversighted. We need to also ensure that the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, under whom they serve, do not have uh, uh, undue interference in the activities of the uh, uh, all uh, right, EFCC. All right, now, now, what about the case of uh, Farouk Lawan, you know, who has actually served his term and was released uh, you know, recently? That's the former lawmaker and also the case of uh, Gundu Day, which is actually still in the works. Can these cases be singled out? I can't single out Gundu Day's case. Gundu Day's case is not going anywhere. You know, it's not even EFCC that is prosecuting Gundu Day. It is the Kano State Anti-Corruption Agency that is prosecuting Gundu Day. It's not EFCC. And in case of uh, Farouk Lawa, this is just one out of how many dozens of cases. Farouk Lawa is just one out of so many politically exposed persons that have been indicted for abuse of office and for corruption. So if only, I mean, uh, someone, I, I think it was Benjamin Franklin that says, laws are like cobwebs, where the small flies are caught, and the big ones break through. So when you have this double standard, and don't also forget that if Farouk Lawa had been the, the, in the good book of the government of that day, mm. he could have escaped justice, just like many of them did. Uh, I mean, there are so many oh. governors who are under EFCC indictment who still goes ahead to contest election and come to the Senate and start making laws for us. Is that not impunity? Oh, Somebody right. is under investigation, and yet, you, you could not buy him from contested election, mm. and he comes and becomes a member of the upper chamber of the National Assembly, start making laws, and the case winds on, takes on over 10 years to prosecute. Justice delayed is justice denied. The, there was lot, administrative of Administration that. of Criminal Justice Act of 2015, which says all criminal cases should be dealt with within six months or thereabout. Why is that law, that act, Administration of Criminal Justice Act, why is it not in, being implemented? We, we why is it that, that anti-corruption cases still drag on for eternity, mm -hmm. eight years, ten years? Why is it dragging so 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 long? Why the impunity? Why the filibustering? Mm -hmm. So these are questions because it impacts on our development, and that's why I'm concerned. Uh, and that's why okay, so, I, so what I about, didn't want what to about mention these, people's names. these citizens now? You know, what role can they play? Uh, and I remember back then when the uh, whistleblower policy, uh, you know, was uh, in, in place, you know, and it was really effective. What protections should whistleblowers have, you know, to safely report corruption? That's it. 
That's part of the impunity. That's part of the impunity. In 2019, was it 2019 or earlier? The Buari administration started this policy, whistleblower policy, where they incentivize those who could help in the fight against corruption, says, saying that, okay, if you if you tell us, give us information about a corrupt person, uh, we will reward you with past 5% or 7% of whatever we are able to recover. Why is it that they left it at the policy level? As I speak with you, the law to guarantee protection of whistleblowers is just kept in view in the National Assembly. They deliberately did not pass that law. It's been there for how many circles now? They have refused to pass that anti-corruption law, which will safeguard and protect both the person and the family of whistleblower. And you cannot fight corruption through whistleblowing by just incentivizing people with money. What if they volunteer the information and their lives are threatened or they are even eliminated? The way whistleblowing works in other crimes, like in US, if you are a whistleblower and you know that your life is in danger, the American system will take care of you. They can, they can change you, they can remodel you, they can, they can spend last dollar to make sure that you and your family are protected, even if it means relocating you to another country where you will be safe. They will give you a different identity. I've read the noble that speaks to that. And, and that's why you see Americans volunteering information about the uh, nefarious activities of criminals in and around them. But if you do that in Nigeria, you may not live to spend that money that you will get as a reward for your whistleblowing because the system will just expose you. In fact, you will be surprised that your identity, which is supposed to be anonymous, could be revealed. And then the criminal will come after you, after your family, and may even wipe up the whole family if care is not taken. All right. Well, uh, sadly, uh, quite an interesting conversation uh, today. Uh, this is where we actually have to uh, end this. Thank you so much for speaking to us on this. Thank you. We appreciate you for your time. I, I, I thank the management and uh, staff of uh, New Central TV for, for also providing this platform. And I want you to take on this and, and let it be a national discourse. Because we need to collectively fight this impunity if we want our country to develop. Thank Definitely you for the opportunity. Will. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much, Jideojo, public affairs analyst.